You know, I, I was on Hayes last night uh, talking about this. Um, oh, see, we'll get to the sound too. This CVS story, where CVS has made a decision that will cut into their profits or their revenue, I should say, by about one percent. Right? It's uh, it's going to cost them two billion dollars off of a. Um, what is it? Is it is it one percent? How, how much is it going to cost? How much is their their annual revenue? Maybe is it one percent? Maybe it's two billion over ten years. I'm not sure. It's going to cost them some money up front to uh, basically stop selling cigarettes and I presume other tobacco products. I don't know what else they sell in terms of like chewing tobacco or whatnot. Um, and they're going to stop doing this. And, it, you know, bottom line, they this is a, a profit strategy for them. They're trying. I think they're anticipating. Uh, they think that it's going to enhance their brand. I think they also think that, like, we're going to be well positioned uh, because of this brand enhancement to uh, expand our health care services. That there's going to be a lot more um, uh, people with health insurance now. Because of the Affordable Care Act. And we could capture some of those people. Uh, I think that. And it's interesting, too, that. Research has shown. That you are five times as likely to quit smoking cigarettes if you don't like tobacco companies, if you have a problem. Like almost you could say a political issue with big tobacco companies. You are three to five times more likely not to start smoking. If you have a uh, jaundiced perspective on tobacco companies, my guess is this is completely a guess. But if you have that perspective, you don't like tobacco companies. You are more likely to go to CVS just because of the politics of this. Who knows? Um, but the conversation last night was more about are there other areas where, you know, let's look at what the model of tobacco was, right? A big industry externalizing their, their costs to reap profit off of their product. In other words, we're going to make a lot of money off of tobacco, it's going to be subsidized by the taxpayer because they're going to pay all the health implications of tobacco on the general population. And the consumer is going to absorb a lot of a lot of that pain, too. And, and the way that we avoid having this conversation is by pretending that tobacco is not as deadly as it turns out they knew it was. There's a parallel you can draw to oil companies, coal companies. In fact, they used the same marketing people as tobacco did, who came up with the whole, just put a you know measure of doubt in people's mind, cloud the conversation a little bit. We know that oil companies and coal companies foist their costs on to the public, whether it's eh, we're going to use a, uh, a company that's going to give us a, che a cheap agent to clean our coal. And they, you know, they're providing it to us cheap. The cost will come somewhere down the road when they poison the Elk River and put formaldehyde and other chemicals into and And they'll deal with that cost. We will never pay that cost. We, the coal company, will never pay that cost. We will never pay the cost of the asthma or the mercury poisoning, or any of those things in the course of selling our product. Cheap coal, <laughs> right? Cheap coal. That's why it's so widely used, because it's cheap. It's cheap because everybody else is paying the cost of it. We don't have to put that cost on to our uh, initial customer. Everybody pays the cost, and it's always a bank shot, so they don't really quite realize that they're paying the cost on it. And so the question becomes... How do you apply what happened in tobacco to climate change or to gun ownership? The primary impetus 
of all the legislation, of all the social stigmatization, of, uh, of the massive reduction in the amount of people who smoke, from 49% of the population to 18% of the population over the course of like 30, 40 years. The primary catalyst, the biggest driver, was civil litigation, trial lawyers. Trial lawyers. There's no room for trial lawyers in the context of, of guns because Congress has basically said you cannot hold gun manufacturers liable for their product in any shape or form, which is extremely unique in the context of American society. There, and it's been very hard for trial lawyers to get an in at least on the sort of broader questions of the way that an Exxon or whatnot, I mean, a BP, you got trial lawyers coming in there, but it's much harder to make this case of like, hey, you're poisoning and you're destroying our atmosphere. I mean, that is why the coal, you know, I would imagine to a large extent, that's why the energy companies, you know, why they f fight climate science. Because it, once it's shown that they're culpable for something, mm, you know, then who knows what happens. But uh, I made the point that, you know, Bill McKibben's organization, 350.org, uh, GoFossilFree.org, I think it is, has been going around and, and pushing a divestment campaign and, and saying, these companies, they're bad because they are reaping profits and making you pay for their profits before you even put a drop of gas in your car. It's a question of priorities. Obviously, we can't get out of, we have a greater need for energy than you do for tobacco. And when you see someone die next to you from tobacco, and it's clearly a function of tobacco, it's much easier to communicate than sort of seeing like sort of the general malaise or the, uh, the sort of the, the destruction of the planet on, on a broad scale. But uh, there are parallels to be brawn, uh, drawn there.